All right, so in this video, we're going to introduce Cauchy sequences, uh, which are basically just, well, they end up being the same thing as convergent sequences, uh, but the Cauchy criterion, which is the property which define, which is in the definition of Cauchy sequences, is itself a very useful thing. It shows up in many other areas of math, and there are other contexts in which Cauchy sequences uh, do not necessarily converge, um, and the Cauchy criterion can be very useful in those cases too to identify, uh, to, you know, well-behaved sequences. Basically, another nice thing about the Cauchy criterion, one of the things that makes it useful for us, is the fact that it gives us more ways to talk about sequences converging without knowing their limiting value. Okay, we actually already kind of saw this before, um, you know, when we were talking about monotonic sequences, right? So if you recall, uh, in showing monotone implies convergence, bounded in monotone, of course. Bounded monotone sequences converge. We did not know the limiting value explicitly at least, right? Well, not very explicitly, depending on how you define explicitly. Uh, I mean, we were able to describe it as the, you know, supremum or infimum of the, of the values in the sequence, which gives us sort of an unambiguous idea of what it is, but we did not um, know it numerically. In this and so, and this is, you know, this is useful, right? For, for analyzing other sequences, for example, the sequence which converges to E or whatever, uh, to be able to say that they converge, even though we don't, we can't really talk about what the limiting value is. The same thing is true here. So the Cauchy criterion is similar, okay? So I'm going to actually just erase this. So let me just state the definition of a Cauchy sequence. Well, let me sort of describe it a little bit first. So intuitively, Cauchy sequences are sequences whose values get close together as you go on, or as they go on, I don't know, grammar. Right, so um, sequences whose values sort of cluster together uh, it makes sense that this is a property that a convergent sequence would have. Uh, of course, we have to describe precisely what we mean by this, um, and that's what the definition is. So a sequence Sn is Cauchy if um, for all epsilon greater than zero, it looks very similar to the definition of normal convergence. There exists a capital N, or sorry, a capital N, uh, such that now we're gonna say for all N and M bigger than capital N, we have uh, Sn minus Sm is less than epsilon, okay? So what's the difference here? Really, it's this M here, which I'll sort of highlight a little bit, okay? So if you literally just deleted this little M, you would end up with something which is uh, identical to the definition of normal convergence, okay? So it's this thing here that's key, right? And notice that now there's no reference to S, the limiting value S, it's just looking at the differences between two terms of the same of the sequence itself, right? 
And also notice that it's for an arbitrary pair of indices, which are both bigger than n, but they can be like far apart from each other in the sequence, right? Um, so it's like, it's not just talking about the successive differences between like Sn and Sn plus one or whatever. It's not saying that those have to get small. It's actually saying that all of the differences after a certain point get small, which is stronger. Okay, and in fact, that brings me to oh, whoops, the next lecture question. So this would be lecture five question two, I believe. Okay, give a sequence for which um, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists an, a capital N such that for all N bigger than capital N, um, Sn minus Sn plus one is less than epsilon, but Sn does not converge. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. This is counterintuitive that this is possible, but it is possible to write down a sequence where the successive differences, the distance between two adjacent terms actually approaches zero, right? Uh, but the sequence itself does not converge. So take a minute to think about that. And remember to include your answer on your homework. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, sort of give you the, um, well, here, I'll just write it kind of small in the corner over here. I'm not going to explain in depth uh, why this is true, but uh, here's, well, here's, and there are many possible answers, of course, as with a lot of these questions, but um, the, uh, the one that I was had in mind was um, something like S or S1 equals one, S2 equals one plus one half, S3 equals one plus one half plus one third, um, and so on. This is called the harmonic series, right? So um, these diverge. This is well known. You probably saw this in, in calculus, um, but uh, this sequence diverges because these numbers actually approach infinity. But if you look at it, the differences, right, the distance between two successive ones is just one over n. So that actually approaches zero. So definitely for any epsilon, you can find this capital N, you can just take capital N to be like one over epsilon. And then the distance between any two successive terms after that value of capital N will always be less than epsilon. Okay, so let's uh, move on now. So now we would like to show Actually, I'm going to call it for this video. And then in the next video, we'll um, show basically that Cauchy sequences and convergent sequences are the same.